I was selling the heads away, so I'm trying to get a few things back together. So I've got the tank in, and this is a uh, I've learned after the event. This is a 150 tank, so we've got the vent, the vent here, rather than coming up inside the filler neck. And I think this is actually a better idea. So this will come out into the uh, the inner wing and go up somewhere. So I'll fathom that out later. Got the exhaust in, and so I'm having a look at the brakes now. And I didn't really want to get these apart yet because I didn't want too many things in pieces. But I'm sure I'll need to send these cylinders off. Um, and this this drum was seized. I couldn't I couldn't turn it. It used to turn, but it stopped turning. Um, and I couldn't turn it to get to this adjuster. But it tapped off with a, a copper hammer. So, get that cleaned up and see what we've got. Fall off the car, this is what it looks like when it's in bits. And a couple of things. My springs were fitted from the front and in one of my books it shows them fitted from the back I don't see that makes a lot of difference really and my bottom spring was fitted here and in the book it shows it here and the same on that side as well um, and again my spring was on the front and in the book it shows it on the back uh, wheel cylinder that's well and truly seized and nothing, nothing holding that on except the tension of the springs by the look of it. Um, but you have to take that banjo off to pull it through the hole. Uh, this is free, surprisingly enough. Uh, there's a boss there that locates it on the back plate. Uh, so that's good news, clean that up. These are quite an art to get off, these beehives. I think you put a screwdriver down the down the spring and push it off the this tab on here. Uh, that one came off more by luck and judgment. This one was bust. And I think my linings are okay. So I'll clean those up and have a look at them. Just cleaning up the brake cylinder before I soak it. And there's some really crusty stuff down there. So wheel cylinder, this is um, this has come loose. So this piston here. Let's come out of there, and when you pull the handbrake, when you pull the handbrake, it pushes that piston out. When you put your foot on the brake, it must push that piston out, which pushes this whole lot forward. So I'll give it a more small soak and get the. But I suspect there's a pin through here, and I suspect you have to take that out to get that out and I might leave that for the uh, the brake people to do and something a bit weird on on this this is all free and that turns but there's nothing to stop that going back in. We've got a thread there with nothing on it. I wonder should there be a, a nut on it down there? You see, just you turn that and there's nothing that keeps it out or in or whatever. I mean, the, the, the shoes will hold it in, the force of those, but nothing to hold it out. So I'll look at the other side and see what's on there. I noted on the other side that the 
This is the other side of the brakes. Now these springs were on the outside like they are here. And the problem with putting it on the outside is it does sort of foul on this strap here. So that would be better on the inside. That bottom one, I don't see it makes any difference, but we're on the outside again there. And I'm missing a circlip off the end of this strap. Um, so we'll see if it drops out when I take it to bits. I've discovered how to get these off. You grab it with some pliers like that, push in and twist. They come off quite easily. I suspect they come off easier than going back in. So that was straightforward. Here's another difference. This is the second one I took off. And when you turn that adjuster, it turns this plate as well. And as it turns, it locks into there. So you can only <coughs> you can only set this at a, at quarter turns. Whereas on the other one, you can't do this one handed. I don't think. But that 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 quarter slotted plate doesn't turn with that cog, so it's come separated somehow. I'll have to take that apart and see why it's not going round with that screw. Well, I'll show you what we got here. This is the plate that didn't go round and that's on a oval slot if you like and I think that just slipped off its fixing point um, so I think if I bolt that all together tight that will be okay and here's my confession I shouldn't really put my daftness on here but Right, no nut down there. What happens as you turn as you turn this cog here, it turns this cog which unscrews this. It unscrews it and of course that can't move because it's trapped by the um, the brake shoe. So there we are, all complete. the bust one sorted this plate here this plate here <clears throat> it's just worn a bit where it catches on that um, oval so I've flipped it over and had to redome it the opposite way but that does what it should now that's good stuff ready to go back on. Um, use the old shoes. They're good. I'll need to just put a, uh, a leading edge on the corners which will be that one I think and that one. These are my old cylinders which would probably actually clean up all right. That came out okay. That's stuck in there. We have to knock that pin out first. But I've tried the other one and it's one and truly stuck. But I'm missing, I'm missing this. And these are welded to there, and yet there's no sign of any weld on those. So I'm wondering how they've disappeared. What they have anyway. Uh, but they're a good match, not quite as nice with this nice casting, this is a stamped out piece but they look okay. And rubber boots which go on the outside which I didn't have any of those. And a new beehive, one of mine was broke. And I'm still missing one of these seed clips which I forgot to get. Which is annoying. And then, and some new screws. 
Let's try and get all that back on now. So I've nearly got these on. And I think, well, I found this the easiest way. I put the springs on behind these shoes, which is, I think, where they should be. Mine were on the front before. Um, and I fitted, I fitted this spring there and there, and then offered it up to, um, up to the back plate and stretched it over this adjuster. And then this end, you've got a lot more room to play with. So I've got the spring on that end into the piston and it's off the piston there but or off the cylinder there but the spring's on and I think I'll just be able to stretch that over there and then try and get those beehives in. So I just got this union to fit <coughs> and there's a couple of copper washers there. Um, a big one and a small one, and they'll only go in one position. But I'm sure already it was the other way around in the book, but that's it, because the, the, that bolt is thicker at, at the, the head end. Anyway, I've annealed those like a good boy. And that plug, if you take it out of the cylinder you just bought and put it in there, so you come around to put the brake pipes on. And that rubber boot that goes on there, I would put that on as soon as you can because it's hard to squeeze it past that. So when you first put the cylinder in the hole, get the boot on it. This is how I set my sender up. So I don't think you can see down there. But the, the float is about half an inch off the bottom of the tank rather than touching the bottom of the tank and I've set I set my multimeter to continuity so when I connect that probe to the chassis and that probe to that top that top uh, terminal and then I can go down here and lift it and it cuts out so that will give me plenty of plenty of warning that we're going to run out um, the float could go a bit lower but I'd rather it was this way than the other way Right, see if I can get some brake pipes in. These are obviously my old ones. And I've kept all the bits and taped them together where they're broken off to try and help me work out what's what. And this is the a front section that goes around the front cross member. And these two ends, this one and this one, go to the front flexes. And then this one goes to the master cylinder. I've got the book to help me out. But of course that's for left hand drive and I want to do mine right hand drive so I've got to convert everything in my head to a mirror image. And apparently all the pipes are the same for right hand or left hand. They're just bent in different ways. And they're not awfully well labelled these but I think I've figured those out. So those are those. I've got these these clips which slot into the body, well into the uh, chassis. And I've read somewhere that you, rather than trying to push them in, you twist them in because they break quite easily I think. And they're quite expensive for what they are, about two or three quid each. So let's see if I can get those in around the front. Uh, see where we end up. And I've just labelled those up as A, B and C. Um, and I think... So this one becomes A, which is labelled 
master, master cylinder master cylinder it's a three way I think that's that one this one is B this is labeled three way to near side front and that little short one's going to be that one That's all the front end on. Um, could be neater here, but we've got this bracket to go on here, which is for the, um, the steel water pipe that comes up from the radiator, and that looks like this is all going to be in the way. So I've just fitted all these, sort of just nipped them up and tightened them. I think something's got to, got to happen there to give me some clearance around that. Um, that's in. And of course, when I labelled these A, B and C, um, because it's all mirror image, left A becomes B and B becomes A, so I need swapping round. And then round here. And then this is... This union here is certainly handed, but I can only see one part number for it, uh, for left hand or right hand, um, but that seems to work. Um, brake light switch, I doubt that's going to work, but we shall see. Um, and then the rear comes off here and goes away. And here's my rear, and there's a lot of it when you see it on the ground like this. So that ends master cylinder. Then we come up here, um, and that must bolt to the axle, and then onto each wheel. Uh, quite long runs these with a few clips. So from the front of the car there, master cylinder. Runs back here, and we've got a clip here. And it passes through that hole in that outrigger. Comes out here onto this union new pipe. Sorry about the radio, it's the other side of the room and I can't be bothered to get it and turn it down. So through here. I'm um, using a lot of the old fittings. So do I use this original washer, which I reckon I've got a lot more spring than this modern thing and I don't think there's anything wrong with that so there we are back up there and it'll come up the inside of the chassis somewhere onto that flex seat that's all the brake lines in although nothing's tight It all gets a bit congested around here, so I'll wait till there's some weight on the chassis. Uh, at the moment, that axle is just touching the exhaust, and the shocks are very close to everything. So I'll see where it all ends up. Um, and this, these straps here, these straps that were in the brakes. I've taken those out because it seems they shouldn't be there uh, and they weren't made up with sort of odds and ends, got the wrong C-clips on and the wrong bolts and everything. So I think somebody just added those because they thought they were missing. Um, so I've done away with them as the book says. And I think that's pretty much it now. Just waiting for the engine. I should get the head back this week and try and get the engine back together.